Everybody welcome, Martian Man TV. Y'all know what it is. Much appreciated, much welcome. Shouts out to all my subscribers and y'all helping me to get to my thousand subscribers. And next goal is ten thousand subscribers. I'm gonna skip the five thousand and go right to ten. Think you're big here, at Martian Man TV. We all thinking big, and definitely appreciate y'all for growing me and my channel and my brand, and always making me feel special and favored. So, this is the shot, episode 14, that I'm showing y'all. Um, It was great. I'm finna show y'all the scene now with Alicia and Duda. Alicia. The one and only. Alicia. 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 So from here I give we are gonna do our little review or recap on the shy and this is episode uh, fourteen. Um, I'm loving the shy. It's a uh, scene in here that threw me off, um, a zesty scene that I wasn't expecting. Um, Y'all that kind of threw me off. Um, I'm not into that type of entertainment and it it just throw me off like every time I try to get into these certain series the um the nature of some of these characters throw me off so in this scene it's basically like Nook trying to steal Mac on Keisha you know what I mean he asking Keisha how her and Emmett feel about him being the daddy and do Keisha hate him? And do she still love him or whatever? So, 
you had a whole thing going with them too where you know Nook trying to check Keisha temperature if you ask me um my theories is I'm seeing Keisha potentially cheating on Emmett with Nook uh for the most part though Keisha pretty solid I don't see her on the flip side cheating on Emmett. So I want to contradict y'all my uh my conspiracy theory on that one. But um I don't know, man. Nook seemed like he trying to get on Keisha's soft side and potentially dirty Mac on Emmett. Uh obviously we will see maybe in the next episode. What's going to come between the Keisha and Nook situation? I'm hearing the fans wanting Keisha to hook up with Nook, but I don't know, man. They kind of turn their back on Emmett. I still see Keisha being solid to Emmett because, you know, Emmett been holding Keisha down in his own way. You know, we forget about uh, the chaos Keisha was going through when she was going through her abuse situation and the aftermath of her being abused. And when she didn't want to eat, Emmett was the one that got Keisha to eat. Uh, so I believe Keisha, Keisha and Emmett have a, a, a strong bond. Will it be tested with the Nook situation? Definitely. Uh, we also see Serena hooking up with uh, Rosalind, which is, you know, do the little, want to do the pieces. You know, candy from Escape for those, you know, who want to know the, the real deal with her. But uh, that definitely, they situation definitely was popping off in this episode. Um, You had Serena teaching Rosalind sign language. You had Duda. <laughs> Duda thought it was hilarious because he peeped game. He knew what time it was. So. You had that going on. Uh, we see Zay kicking it with Kenya again. Um, I showed y'all that scene. I want to, you know, kind of follow up on that. And Kenya likes Zay. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I don't really know what happened with her and Papa, man. I I, I was pretty much thinking the storyline was going to be Papa and Kenya, man. Even though his Pop's dead and his Pop's didn't really want Papa get too involved with her because she already had a kid. It wasn't really that he was... I'm not taking it like he was forbidding Papa to, to be with Kenya completely. I'm just thinking his daddy wanted to... Didn't want Papa to be so gullible and naive to be with a female that had a kid already. And I guess, you know, as a dad... He wanted Papa to utilize his potential and stay focused with doing the pastor thing. He didn't want to see him get distracted and thinking about having sex and chasing girls and dealing with a girl that got a uh, a baby already. And Papa, you know, fresh into his path. So as a dad, he was trying to lead his son on the right path. So I'm not knocking him for that. On the flip side, though, I feel like Papa really liked Kenya and really was trying to give Kenya a chance, but I don't know. It seemed like she digging Zay. You know what I'm saying? Every time Zay put her in the hot seat and say, pretty much, well, you gonna kick rocks, kick rocks. Kenya kind of chews up, you know? Like she said in the scene, like, she interested, but is she safe with you? You know what I mean? She want to feel like she's safe. So, Zay, he wanted to come off a little bit uh, confrontational because, you know, Kenya, the whole church girl thing. But, I mean, I think that's what set their dynamic off. Zay, the hood guy, um, she's the quote-unquote forbidden girl because she a church girl. You know, they supposed to like really not be involved in not doing too you know, indulging, we'll say. Uh, allowing they flesh to run them the way that everybody else do. 
everybody a victim of their they own flesh. So when you know you get hot or you get tempted, that's your flesh. You know what I mean? Then you got your mind and your mind say what your mind telling your body to do. So you got those two dynamics always going to war with each other. Then, you know, you got your spiritual side, right? So them dynamics going to always collide. Then, y'all, this scene, we get the Jackie Long character. So, we got Jackie Long character, which is a guy who robbed a corner store with Damien, which is Emmett's, <laughs> Emmett Lutter said, his half-brother. Well, you know, that's his brother, man. They got the same daddy. But, um, you know how it go. We always use that half. That That's my half-sister. That's my half-brother. We use it real loose. But, uh, yeah, you get um, Darnell trying to get Emmett to hire the Jackie Long character um, as a favor. You know what I'm saying? Darnell want Emmett to hire him because he fresh out of prison and need a job to the point he going to come in and do janitor work just to get his feet wet, which I'm not knocking him for, you know? I'm trying to get him some money. Um. I like Darnell and Emmett, uh, father and son vibe, and how Darnell is with Damien and Emmett, you know what I mean, when they on their family tip, and Emmett want to be stubborn all the time and say that's his half-brother, like, that's pretty hilarious. Um, you get Brittany opening up to Gemma, um, about the whole Bakari thing and how she worked for Duda and basically Duda paying her to spy on her brother and you know she's starting to get that guilty conscience you know because that's that's your brother so ain't the amount of money in the world I mean unless you, you gotta tell him that way it won't be like you taking advantage of your brother behind some money you know what I mean um, at the end of the day, that could always make things go left. But at the end of the day, that's still always our brother. So it ain't worth it. You know what I mean? Tell Bakari, do the gay you 30000 to spy on him. Y'all take that money, buy guns, and get at Duda with his money. That would be smart, right? So I'm just saying, like, if that was a real life scenario, that's what you're supposed to do. you always supposed to stick to the family. Even when the odds is against y'all or people trying to play y'all against each other, y'all figure out a way to play the game and win. That's what it's all about, winning. But uh, overall, y'all, this is my review, my recap of the shy. This is episode 14, uh, season six. I keep wanting to say season four, but it's actually season six of the shot. This is the sixth season. And y'all, I pretty much, I liked it. Victor, Alicia and Rashad got Victor out of this situation. That's one scene I didn't get to play for y'all where when Victor go to court uh, for the case of him killing um, Quentin, he basically get released. They, they let they basically let Vic go. I'm like, oh, that's what's up. So Vic wondering where all this pool come from. How all of a sudden the judge and the, the prosecution in his back pocket. So when he go outside, I guess to get in the car, Alicia and Rashad pull up in the limo and congratulate him. Let him know, hey, you know, that was us. You know, thank you. Say, say thank you, huh? And then they kept it moving. You know, Vic was pretty much relieved. Um, he was pretty much trying to do everything on his own without no help. 
And Jake and Rashad really pretty much came to say today, you know, on some real ninja type timing and they held it down for him, man. They 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 was the ultimate support system for him when he was at his lowest. So, you know, Rashad and Jake came through to say today on Victor End because he was having nightmares and being paranoid and waking up in sweats. He almost as finished to shoot Jake, you know what I mean? Just going through it, you know what I mean? Knowing that he in the awkward situation because he basically Duda got his hands in his in his back. Duda got his feet on his neck, so that's not a good vibe. You walking on eggshells and then Duda got his feet on your neck. We also see Nuck um, go holler at Tiff about his business understanding that he got with Rob and how Rob dropped the ball on that. And Tiff, you know, talked her little riff, telling Nuck that, hey, you know, black man, y'all ain't nothing without us black women. And uh, y'all don't always make the right decisions. And we could always make better decisions as a collective, which to a certain point, I agree with. It's some women with great minds and it's some women that they motivate. They motivate us and inspire us. And when we connect with their vibe or with their bond or with their chemistry, it do it. It's it's a it's an organic um It's a it's a blessing. It's an organic metamorphosis. You know what I mean? Where it's more to it than just great minds think alike. Um, it's just something about the black woman, and it's something about when the black man got that bond and that chemistry with the black woman. Um, and they develop into something. And it's a beautiful thing. What I mean when I say that, I mean it ain't no ego or no pride. It's um, it's an eternal psychological understanding. So I think it's a beautiful dynamic um, when a man and a woman is in particular, a black man and a black woman do make a great, you know, vibe. Just like we seeing how Rashad stepped up for Alicia. Like, I love that. Like he told dude to get your hands off my woman. So, you know, I, that's always going to be cool and fly to protect the black woman protect your woman in general and for us to protect our women and our queens and our sisters uh, and the mother of our children uh, the queens on the throne uh, you know the special ones they know who they are I mean I don't gotta say her name I don't gotta say they name like these mothers, these queens, they know who they are. So y'all overall the shy has been great. Um Nuck and Emmett bumping heads about little Ronnie and Nuck keep throwing it in Emmett face that that's his son. And that Emmett don't really got no say so about what he want to do with his son and his parenting. Emmett want to have some type of understanding with Nook where it ain't no ego or pride thing with how we going to raise little Ronnie. But we don't want him to be spoiled and entitled. Know what I mean? We don't want him to have that type of spirit to him. Which I could relate. I could understand. But then Nook got his understanding or his outlook as a man, as a father, which he got a right to because that's his son. 
But uh, we gonna see how that all play out with that, with their family dynamic, which is pretty cool so far. It's like, Keisha got two baby daddies. Know what I mean? And they both active. So it's a good thing. At least the kids got two parents. Three. Lil Ronnie got Nook as his biological pops. And then he got Emmett. So that's a special dynamic. Um, And then, you know, you got Keisha. Like, I, anybody don't know, you know I rocks with Keisha. She's solid. She's solid. Uh, she gonna hold it down to make things happen for the family. And she don't be having to sell herself short. You know what I mean? Keisha don't ever have to sell her body or do nothing to not represent who she is or what she stand for. So that's why I rock with, uh, with Keisha like that. Over Tiff. You know, and the rest of them, that show a little flakiness. Even Kenya. She, I don't feel like she did pop her right. You, you jump right on Zay. But Keisha, she the type, she selective. If she rock with you, she rock with you. And she lure you and she down. So I love that hood dynamic about Keisha. Going back to the first season when Keisha was hiding under Emmett's bed. You know what I'm talking about? Sneaking in the house just to give him some and leave. Like, yeah, I've been rocking with Keisha since day one. Since she was running with Kevin. So, shots out. Hit that subscribe button. Watch this, like this. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. You know what it is. Uh, much love to everybody. Uh, to everybody new to this channel. Once again. Hit that subscribe button and uh, enjoy Martian Man TV and leave comments. Leave your comments, your opinions, your theories. What y'all think going to happen next in episode 15? Stuff like that.